Hey everybody, today love is in the air because it is very close to Valentine's Day. And I thought what better way to celebrate than talking to you about something that I absolutely adore and love, and that is linked data. Why do I love and adore it, you might say? Well, linked data is standardized data. Data that is standardized across different companies and across different databases. How can that be? Well, it's using W3C standards to make it that way. So for those that are not familiar with linked data, I used to describe this as a thing. Something is linked data, but actually linked data is all predicated off of the W3C standards for linked data. So think of it as a pointer to information that is associated with a unique ID. Now, UIDs exist in the world. They don't necessarily have to be associated with linked data, but UIDs are the whole way that linked data works. And these might look like URLs. Well, so a lot of the time this is in RDF, but it can also be in OWL, it can be in SCOS. There are a number of other standardized schema that this comes in. And here's the great thing. Hmm. So because this data is standardized, you don't have to do as much ETL on it because the same field is going to be the same field in every situation. Now, not all the standards are going to be uh, exactly the same because you can extend these schemas. So just keep that in mind. And that's probably where most of your ETL might happen if you are using this data. But the other nice thing is it's automatically mapping data for you if it's open linked data. And here's why. So let's take UMLS as our example. It is mapping all of the different medical vocabularies that are open together into one specific URI. Why is that important to us? Well, if I don't want to go and do all of that mapping, if I just wanted to find all of the medical terms that mean heart attack, I could do that. One query. And so is Wikidata. Wikidata comes in many languages. So if there are different pages, but they are all written by people from that language, hmm, could that be the natural language of people and using that language? Yes, yes it can. This is another reason linked data is one of my favorite. All right, so what are some other things that we need to know about linked data? Linked open data is something that has a giant cloud associated with it. Now, when you go to this cloud, just be careful because some of these, first of all, this cloud has grown exorbitantly over the past few years and it's not going to stop, which is not necessarily a bad thing. Just make sure you check if these are still live because not all of them are. Now, when you go into this, these are not all open. So linked data doesn't necessarily mean open linked data. So when you see these URLs or URIs, they're not necessarily going to resolve on the internet. Although if you have five-star linked data, it most likely will. So what's an example of five-star linked data? That's UMLS. Go to UMLS and you can see all the different medical vocabularies assigned together. There is a lot of people that are using linked data out there. If you are interested in learning more about linked data, first of all, welcome to my channel. We talk about it a lot here. Please subscribe. And I'm going to have things down below in the description box if you want to get a sneak peek into that. But this whole year, I'm going to be talking a lot more about linked data and how you can use it because it has a lot of uses in knowledge graph, although they are not the same thing, and in machine learning in just entity recognition and extraction projects. These are just a few examples. Linked data also is nice because you can make some. Yes, you. You can make your data into linked data and it does not have to be open. I can't stress that enough. It doesn't have to be open, although ideally we all want to share. Also knowing that's not always possible. So if you want to start to use linked data, you can take it down with a Sparkle endpoint. You can do a bulk download. That's one thing to keep in mind. Sometimes there's a Sparkle endpoint, which is fabulous because then you can just virtually grab what you need. But some of them don't have a Sparkle endpoint, which means you're going to have to download it in bulk or do some other kind of uh, ETL process to just get it. So there is, again, a little ETL involved, but not as much as normal. The last thing that you need to know about linked data is it doesn't necessarily have to be done with Sparkle. And that might be a controversial statement because a lot of the data is in RDF. And how do you get RDF? You do it with a Sparkle query. 
but you can start to abstract this a little bit if you are using something like GraphQL. Just a little word to the wise if you're just very anti-Sparkle for some reason. Also, if you weren't aware of this, Sparkle doesn't mean Sparkle. You would put all over your cupcakes or on your uh, elementary school project that is very sparkly. Sparkle is the query language for RDF. All right, so that is my PSA on linked data and why if I had to pick something that I absolutely adore and that makes the world go round in many ways, it would be linked data. All right, so with that, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you have a fabulous Valentine's Day if you are celebrating, but even without that, I hope you have a fabulous week and I'll catch you next time.